Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is set up a very simple iPhone application project. We're not going to go through actually creating the, the project itself, no code, nothing like that. We're just going to go in there and set up the project. And then in the upcoming videos, we'll begin getting the skeleton in place and we'll go from there. So let's get started. Again, the idea is doing this from scratch. So what I'm going to do is in Xcode, come over here to file. Let's come down to new project. And then from inside a new project, this is where you would normally come in up under iPhone OS application category. And you'd come grab one of these templates over here that best fits the starting point for the application you plan on designing. But in our particular case, what we're going to do is skip all the way down to other at the bottom. And we are going to create an empty project. So this is a completely empty project with no files, targets, or build styles, nothing whatsoever. So let's go ahead and choose this guy. Now it's going to pop up and ask us to go ahead and give this a name. I am creating this inside my documents iPhone apps folder. So the name I'm going to give this is going to be start from, oh, let's do starting, uh, starting from scratch. There we go. So we'll go ahead and save that. Now this is going to be quite quick because there's not a lot of stuff to set up. We, we don't have a classes folder, a other sources folder. We, we, we have nothing, a product uh, folder. I mean, it's, it's in, we don't even have a target, which would probably be a really good place to start. Right now we're just looking at current OS uh, supporting i3, i386 architecture. Um, definitely not looking like an iPhone project at this point. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do is create a new target. So I can just right click on target here or I can come up to project to new target. So let's just come down to targets, right click. I'm going to add a new target. Now what am I targeting? It's going to be a Cocoa Touch application because we're again we're working on creating an application for the iPhone so we'll go ahead and grab the application here and by hitting next we're going to end up in a second with several things set up for us automatically now I'm not just grabbing a regular iPhone template because having these guys set up and getting a property list set up in just a second is not going to enable me to suddenly compile and run and have an application there's still a lot of stuff that needs to take place here over the next few videos so with the Cocoa Touch application selected let's go ahead and hit next and for the target name, what I'm going to do is just set it to the same as my project name. So starting from scratch like such. And let's just go ahead and hit finished. Now we're going to get a target in place. We also get something else if you take a look back here. Starting from scratch, hyphen, info. And if we were to just give ourselves uh, uh, a little bit more room right here, if we can pull this on over. There we go. Look at that. We have our info.property list automatically created for us. Now over here in our target starting from scratch info dialog, First thing I want to do is jump over to build and make a very simple change. Now we, we've got quite a bit of stuff going on now. A minute ago, if we would have gone up to our just our project settings, we would have had nothing in there except for one or two default things. We definitely wouldn't have had lots of categories and all. But by getting a target set up, now we're starting to get some things cooking. What I want to do is take my base SDK up under the architecture section Come over here, drop this down, and I'm going to flip it over to an iPhone Simulator 3.0. So let's just change that. That has changed several things all the way down our list right here for us. So I'm just going to leave everything else the way it is. Now, in a real iPhone application in which you start from one of the templates that are already created for you, there are a few other minor changes that have been made, and there are definitely a handful of additional entries over inside of our info property list. But what we've got right now is going to be everything we need to build something from scratch and to get it running inside of our iPhone simulator. So with that in place, the very next thing I want to do is come over here to general, and from inside Inside of general, there's uh, three different libraries that I would like to be linked against when we go and build this project. So let's go ahead and jump down here and add these guys in. So I'll hit the plus icon. Uh, first thing, just kind of digging down through, I'm going to want it's going to be my core graphics framework. That's going to be pretty important. Coming down a little bit further, we're going to need to add to it our ch -ch -ch -ch, uh, taking a look. Uh, UI kit framework is definitely going to be an important one. And then finally, where is he at? Ah, foundation framework. 
So again, we've got the foundation framework, we've got the core graphics framework, and then most important, since we are putting together an iPhone application, is that UI kit framework. That UI kit is what's going to be responsible here coming up in the next video for actually generating a UI application and allowing us to implement a protocol with our app delegate uh, class that we'll be putting together. And that UI application, that's very, very important in, well, the entire uh, iPhone application. Without it, you know, you're just not going to have one. So we'll get these three frameworks. Let's go ahead and get those added in so that we'll make sure that that is all nice and available. So we'll be linking against those. Uh, from there, the next thing I want to do is jump over to the Properties tab here. And then up under the Main Nib file, this is another really cool thing about building this project from scratch. When you start a standard iPhone app project using one of the templates, you have a nib file that is created for you automatically. And inside of your property list, the info property list, it tells uh, what uh, the main nib file is. And here we're looking at main window. And inside that nib file, if you were to open it up inside the interface builder, you're going to find that you're going to have an, an object for your app delegate. Generally, they have a window, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And all this stuff is already connected up. And then back here in Xcode, you're also going to find that you already have that app delegate class, both the header and the implementation file, already established for you. And again, the connections are already there. But what we're going to do is create all of that from scratch. So I'm just going to take this main window right here and remove that. And by taking that out, hey, we don't have a nib file to look for. And that's a good thing because at this point in time, there is no nib file because every file that we've created, you've seen them come into existence. So by coming in here and wiping that guy out, the next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and close our dialog because that's everything we needed there. Now, let us take just a second and look at some errors down here. And oh, we've got some things in red. We also have, thanks to our targets, we also have a products grouping put together now. So inside this group, you'll see that we've got our starting from scratch app. Of course, it's red at the moment because it doesn't actually exist on our first build. Once everything is kind of put together and runs smoothly, this guy will no longer be red because he's going to exist. But what about these errors? What do we have going on right now? Let's just go ahead and click down here. And we're going to get our project uh, format conflicts dialog and from inside here. Basically, what it's telling us is that code signing identity build settings are not supported by Xcode 2.4. Xcode 2.4? What? Well, if we come down to edit project settings and then come up here to project format, the format right now is looking to use Xcode 2.4, uh, basically something that's going to be compatible with that. Well, that's not what we're going to be doing. We're going to be working with Xcode 3.1. So we want it to be 3.1 compatible. So let's go ahead and click that. Everything just cleared out back here. Fantastic. And one more thing before we leave out of our project settings here. Let's just jump down here to the base SDK for all configurations. Currently, we're set to the Mac, the current Mac OS. Uh -uh. Let's go ahead and drop this guy down. And once again, I'm just going to cruise on down to iPhone Simulator 3.0. So we'll go ahead and switch that. You'll notice up here we've also switched over to Simulator 3.0. And with that in place, we can now go ahead and close out of this dialog. And we can take this dialog right here, go ahead and close out of that. We're getting there. We're getting very, very close at this point. The next thing I want to do is just, just a little bit of organization. I'm just going to simply set up two new groups, two new folders, uh, just so that it somewhat mimics an actual iPhone application template when you... Uh, start one of those up. So I'm just going to come up here to starting from scratch. Let's right click and add. I am going to add a new group. And the, inside this group, I'm going to call, uh, well, I'm going to give it a name, not inside, but other sources. Okay. And then I'm going to create one more group. And this group is going to have the name of classes. All right. So at this point, we have our project established. We don't have any files in place. We, we don't have a, a main function to enter into and kick things off. Nothing. 
but we do have our target set up. We've got bare bone properties set up, and the uh, the project itself is now looking towards actually creating a um, iPhone application. So in the next video, what we're going to do is put together the simple skeleton for our application, and we'll get it to where we can begin compiling, building some things, and making sure that all is well. And from there, things should become interesting really fast. So again, nice simple video, but with that, that is going to wrap this one up. Thanks a lot, everyone.